Hello and welcome to another instructional video in the course Media in Action.eu, which is co-funded by the European Union. In today's video, we're going to tackle media and digital literacy. At the end of this video, you will have learned about the definition of different literacies in the 21st century, especially digital literacy and media literacy. The elements of digital literacy in the context of the digitalization of society and the importance of media literacy in the life of children and youngsters. In this graphic by the World Economic Forum, we have what are the most important 21st century skills, and we can see that there are three columns. To the left, we have foundational literacies, in the middle we have competencies, and then to the right we have character qualities. If we look carefully, we can see that in both foundational literacies and in competencies, we have media literacy. Even though this is not called media literacy, we can see, for example, that in foundational literacies, we have a, a strong element of ICT literacy, which is important in media literacy because most of the media, if we look at it in terms of production, uses ICT. Then, in terms of competences, in the middle, we can see that there is critical thinking and problem solving, which is a very important part in media literacy. We also see creativity, which can be shown through the media. Communication and collaboration, especially communication, which is the foundation of media. Even if we go to the right, we can see that uh, curiosity, initiative, persistence, adaptability, leadership, and social and cultural awareness are also elements that we find in media literacy, as we are going to see later on. So what are the different elements of digital literacies, and how is this connected to media literacy? We can see immediately that media literacy is one of the elements of digital literacies. We can see that critically read and creatively produce academic and professional communications in a range of media constitutes media literacy, and this is important. However, there are counterparts. This media literacy is complemented by information literacy to find, interpret, evaluate, manage and share information, which once again, as we have seen, is a very important element for the producer or the prosumer, when the consumer and the user becomes producer. We can also see that there are communication and collaboration literacies. Participate in digital networks for learning and research which is also an important part in media literacy. We also see digital scholarship, participate in emerging academic, professional and research practices that depend on digital systems. This is not for the younger generations, but is important for the older generations, the professionals. There are also learning skills, ICT literacy and career and identity management. And we can see how media literacy stands both by itself and it also stands in complementarity with all these different kind of literacies. And the common factor among them is that they all have a digital component. Here we have ICT proficiency. This is more focused on the ICT skills, on how much we can use ICT. And even here we have elements of media literacy. For example, we have digital creation, problem solving and innovation. And digital creation, today we know that in media literacy, the tools to create messages in the media, they are all digital and the amount of equipment and software and hardware that you need is very simple. Today, with a smartphone, you can be a videographer, you can be a photographer, you can create and record yourself in podcasts. Information, data and media literacies is another concentric circle. There is digital learning and development, we can see that digital learning today makes a lot of use of digital tools. We also have digital communication, collaboration and participation. We can see today that most of the communication that we do is actually based on digital skills. Digital identity and well-being is another important factor and this encompasses all of them, especially when we look towards media literacy as having a person who is not just a consumer but also a producer. But in terms of uh, consumption, this is more important because 
uh, we need to know how a person actually identifies with the messages it receives and how it interprets the messages it receives. And then this actually contributes to the creation of the personal identity, especially in youths. So what are we talking about? All these literacies, when they come together, digital literacy, e-skills, media literacy, information literacy, traditional literacy, right, reading and writing, all come together and point towards the 21st century effective digital citizen. Apart from being effective, I would also say that it is an empowered digital citizen. But how do we look at media literacy and digital literacy? For some people today, having Wi-Fi, having internet access is the foundation of any basic human need. Obviously, what we see here are two cartoons. There is a caricature, but there is a very strong element of truth, especially when we go to the right when we see about priorities. Unfortunately for some people, the mere fact of consuming technology has become a priority over other things, such as personal health and personal well-being. And we see how important it is for a person to be digitally literate and media literate so that this consumption is not done in a way that it harms the person but enriches the person and empowers the person. So according to the Library Association of America, information literacy is a set of abilities requiring individuals to recognize when information is needed and have the ability to locate, evaluate and use effectively the needed information. And this we can see already overlaps with the uh, definition of media literacy as we are seeing in this video. So information literacy in the digital world has a strong complementarity to media literacy and digital literacy. Here we have two different interpretations of media literacy. The first one goes back some time, but is still very valid today in the 21st century. Media literacy is the ability to access, analyze, evaluate and create media in a variety of forms. So even in 1992, where internet was still in its infancy, we didn't have social media, we didn't have smartphones and portable computing devices, the creation of the media was already being indicated as an important part of media literacy. And then here we also have the two elements of media literacy. We have the consumption part, that is the access, analysis, evaluation, and the production part, the create media in a variety of forms. In the other definition by the Center for Media Literacy, we see that media literacy is a 21st century approach to education. The link between media literacy and education here is being emphasized. It provides a framework to access, analyze, evaluate, create and participate with messages in a variety of forms from print to video to internet. So, so we hear the overlap with the previous definition. Media literacy builds an understanding of the role of media in society, as well as essential skills of inquiry and self-expression necessary for citizens of a democracy. And once again, here we have the democratic element being highlighted. We have already seen in other videos how much media literacy is important as a building block in a democracy. Another definition by the American Library Association, but this time this is about digital literacy. The definition is that digital literacy is the ability to use information and communication technologies to find, evaluate, create and communicate information, requiring both cognitive and technical skills. And here the difference we have is the introduction of cognitive and technical skills. We have already seen in various definitions of 21st century skills the need to have cognitive competences, cognitive skills. And these also complement the technical skills. And we see from what we observe around us that today's generation, today's youngsters have a lot of technical skills but are deficient in cognitive skills. And this is something which we need to highlight when promoting media and digital literacies. Here we have a cartoon where we see what happens when today's generation is given older technology. Personally, I think that the book is not older technology. The book is there to stay and it is very appropriate technology to learn from it. But we also have alternative versions, the digital versions. And then here we have the teacher saying, no, you don't swipe. 
you turn. They are called books because these children actually are trying to use uh, the book the same as they would use a digital device like a smartphone or a tablet. According to Paul Gilster, who defined digital literacy way back in 1997, digital literacy is the ability to understand and use information in multiple formats from a wide variety of sources when it is presented via computers. Today we need to update that definition, although it is very valid, we need to say that it is not presented only via computers, but via all the other means, via the new digital means and all the computing devices. We must not forget that after all, the smartphone and the tablet are mini computers. In fact, they are known as computing devices. According to UNESCO, in a definition published just in 2017, the term digital skills refer to a range of different abilities, many of which are not only skills per se, but a combination of behaviors, expertise, know-how, work habits, character traits, dispositions, and critical understandings. These skills and competencies are interconnected and broadly complementary. So, apart from having the interconnectedness and the complementarity, here is an important new element. That is, having digital skills, being digitally literate, has an effect on your lifestyle. It is also how you behave, not just what you know, what you know to do, not just your competencies, but also become character traits, dispositions, and critical understandings. So in here, we have a far-ranging definition of digital skills that not only provide you with skills and competences, but also have an effect on you personally as a human being. Here we have critical digital literacy. When we see digital literacy not just as being able to use technology in a fruitful and meaningful way, but also its effects that it has on the persona, on the human being. This is a complementary and extension of what we have seen in the previous slides. So here we can see that critical digital literacy means that you have the ability to analyze, to make meaning, to decode. And decoding, we know that is a very important element in media literacy. And also using the consumption side, which is quite straightforward. But there is also the persona. There are also sensitive issues related to critical digital literacy. Because when there is sensitive issues, there is also uh, issues of identity, issues with relating to different digital contexts, and the purposeful management and collaboration of one's online persona. We are seeing here that we have a distinction between the person in real life and its extension on the digital platforms, in the digital world. And we have seen already in other videos how uh, our reflection on the social media is leaving an effect on how we look at ourselves. And this obviously has an impact on our children and our youth, especially when they are still defining their personality, where they are still uh, getting to know who they really are. Mark Prensky, this is a quite popular and famous name where digital literacy is concerned because in 2001 he came up with an idea that provided a new way of looking at digital literates. He said that in today's students, remember this is 2001, today's students think and process information fundamentally differently from their predecessors. These differences go far, further and deeper than most educators suspect or realize. It is very likely that our students' brains have physically changed and are different from ours as a result of how they grew up. The most useful designation I have found for them is digital natives. Our students today are all native speakers of the digital language of computers, video games and the internet. Our digital immigrant instructors who speak an outdated language, that of the pre-digital age, are struggling to teach a population that speaks an entirely new language. So in here we have the introduction of two very important notions. Digital natives, those who are brought up, those who actually are born, surrounded by technology and therefore the way they use technology is very different from those who were born in different times and 
they are called digital immigrants because they have to introduce themselves to this new uh, technology-rich environment. However, Pransky's label has been criticized for the distinction which many times cannot be clear-cut. Some people can be digital natives even though they have not actually been brought up surrounded by today's digital technologies because they know how to speak the language because they have learned how to speak the language. Furthermore, even though you know how to touch the right buttons, to press the right buttons, how to swipe, how to use technology, it doesn't mean that you can actually be competent in exploiting its benefits. And therefore, this does not make you a digital native because you lack some of the most important competencies and skills in using technology. Here we have a, a sweet cartoon where you can see uh, this difference, this distinction between digital natives and digital immigrants. Here we have this father asking uh, his daughter, hi sweetie, how was school today? And the daughter, who obviously is a digital native, replies that you can read all about it on my blog, dad. And therefore uh, the father is not expecting that kind of answer. And the child actually is using her blog to disseminate what he has done today, not just to his father, but also uh, to the whole world. Here is a classic example of a digital immigrant, even though uh, I don't think that there are many teachers that actually do like Mrs. Miller. However, their approach towards technology is quite similar to this. Here we have technicians bringing in a new computer and actually the teacher, Mrs. Miller, is frightened about this computer because she cannot understand how to exploit it and how to use it. Maybe this is a little bit far-fetched. But I can assure you that we have these kind of teachers today in the 21st century and unfortunately the way they teach they are still not harnessing the potential of computers and the ones who actually are at a disadvantage is not the teacher but uh, the pupils, the students, the learners who attend the classes of these educators. Those who were born and who were brought up in the, in the 70s and the 80s actually can relate to this, to this picture because here we have how people like me, who were born in the 70s and raised in the 80s, were teenagers in the 80s, actually consumed the media. We didn't have mobile phones, we didn't have MP3 players, we didn't have all this knowledge on computers. We didn't have computers at all, we didn't have sat -navs. our libraries were made of books and, and print publications and they were not online. However, most of us, especially those of us who have a professional career, who actually use computers as part of their job, actually have come to realize the importance of technology and have successfully substituted this old technology with new technology. However, the fundamentals that knowing when to do a call and what to say in a call, knowing that you can enjoy music and take it away with you, knowing how to find information, reliable information, such as in an encyclopedia, knowing how to access the fountains of knowledge, this immense fountains of knowledge online instead of going to a library. This we have managed to do with new technology, but the fundamentals, the fundamental skills and competencies we have actually learned in the 70s and 80s, we have carried them with us. So I don't consider myself a digital native, I don't consider myself a digital immigrant, but I am just digitally literate. I consider myself as being media literate. Another sweet cartoon here, if your child can operate a smartphone, they can use any one of these. Obviously, this is the dream of parents who would like to impress on their children that actually using technology like the dishwasher, washing machine, and then oven, they are very easy to operate if you know how to operate um, a smartphone, let alone <laughs> using a mop and using detergents and brush to clean up. Happy Mother's Day to the iPad that is raising your children. This is more a sarcastic comment uh, directed at parents who are leaving their children consuming a lot of technology and they think that iPad is actually taking their role because children stay quiet using iPad and learn through iPad. And they don't realize that personal communication, interpersonal communication with their child is very important at a very tender age. And then iPad, a device, no way can take the role of a mother and a father or a parent or a guardian.
So now let's see some approaches to the definition of media literacy. We're going to concentrate more on media literacy and how we understand it and how we can approach it. We have already seen similar infographics like this one when we see that digital literacy and e-skills and e-competences are all related to each other. And with digital literacy here, we have the different components and some of them actually are complementary or overlap with media literacy. And we can already spot the critical thinking and evaluation, which is very important, practical and functional skills, very important media literacy from the production point of view, the creativity, because media literacy allows you to be creative, proficient communicator, communication is the basis of any media literacy, curation of information, we need to know how to search for, how to find, how to gather, but also how to evaluate and share and pass on information, this is called curation, collaboration, today's media makes it very easy to collaborate because it's not just a traditional media broadcasting and printing and disseminating to many people, but we ourselves as individuals can be collaborators and broadcasters. And there are also the cultural and social understanding where through media we actually understand each other and we create cultural meaning. E safety is also important because in terms of media literacy, when we communicate, we both consume and we produce. When we consume, we need to make sure that what we consume in terms of information is true and when we act on it, we are acting on something that is genuine. And in terms of the production point of view, we need to, to make sure that when we produce something, this does not uh, cause harm, but is beneficial to others. How media literacy skills can help youth and adults. Here we have some points. For example, it can help develop critical thinking skills. It can help understand how media messages shape our culture and society. Identify target marketing strategies. Recognize what the media maker wants us to believe or do. Name the techniques of persuasion used. Recognize bias, spin, misinformation and lies. Discover the parts of the story that are not being told. Evaluate media messages based on our own expectations, experiences, skills, beliefs and values. Create and distribute our own media messages and advocate for media justice. And here we can see the different aspects of media literacy from the production and the consumption point of view, where we can see critical thinking is important, evaluation, investigation is important, but also the uh, production part when we create something which is useful to others and also a media literacy as an important building block in democracy, as we've seen in the last point about advocacy. The Association of Media Literacy of Canada is proposing eight key concepts for media literacy. Number one, all media are constructions. They are invented and there is a reason why are they are constructed in such a way. The media construct reality. That is, when we look at reality through the media, it is being constructed. So we have to make sure that we realize that is what's being shown to us is not reality as reality is, but a construct. Audiences also play a part in getting meaning from the media because they play their part at how they understand the meaning and how they act on it. Media have commercial implications. Most of the media we have, they are business concerns. They are there to make a profit. They are not voluntary organizations. They are not philanthropic organizations. Media contain ideological and value messages. And we must be aware who is sending the message and what are the hidden agendas. Media have social and political implications and we know how the media has played a very important part in the uh, history of humanity throughout the years, especially with mass media in the last 100, 250, 200 years. Form and consent are closely related in the media. That is, how we actually allow the media to influence us is also important. Each medium has a unique aesthetic form. That is, the messages coming through different media, they come in different aesthetic forms, and we have already seen the famous principle that the medium is the message. The form, a message through a medium, 
actually has an effect on how we understand that message. What are the attributes of the constructed message? If we think about a message in particular, not the medium, a message, we see that there are uh, different parts of construction that we need to take into account. Content is just one form of it. Unfortunately, many people look at the message in a superficial way because they only look at the content side. They do not ask who's the intended audience, who's the author, why that format, and why the purpose of that message. Some of these are at the subconscious level. We don't stop and ask these questions for every piece of information that arrives at us. Otherwise, with all the stimuli throughout the day, we do nothing but actually try to decode all these messages. So, we need to be careful. If we are media literate, with experience, we start asking these questions almost subconsciously and without actually stopping from doing other things. But the most important thing is here that we recognize that messages are constructed and we need to investigate. So what are the media literacy basics? We have five core concepts here and five key questions. This is a slightly different view of media literacy, one of the different definitions that we have of media literacy. So on the left, what are the five core concepts according to the Center for Media Literacy? All messages are constructed. We have seen that. Media messages are constructed using a creative language with its own rules. This is relatively new, so the media actually talk to us in a language which we need to understand and we need to learn. Different people experience the same media message differently. This is part of the negotiation of the meeting. Media have embedded values and points of view. This is related to the ideology behind the medium, behind the message we have already seen. And most media messages are organized to gain profit and or power. As we have seen, most of the media and their messages are there to make a profit or to influence us to do something. So what are the five key questions that we need to ask for each concept? Who created the media message? What creative techniques are used to attract my attention? How might different people understand this message differently? What values, lifestyles and points of view are represented in or omitted from this message? And why is this message being sent? Once we answer these five questions, we can have a very clear view of a particular message. This is another take on the digital immigrants and the digital natives uh, theory. Here we have a toddler who is actually trying to read uh, a book, obviously he doesn't know how to read, but the message is that reading is still very valid and very important and that is how we install new software into our brains because installing software is something related to digital skills and digital technology. But here again we see that reading is very important even if we do it through digital technology like using a tablet, smartphone or an ebook reader, the defect of reading in itself is still very valid. A cartoon which actually pokes uh, fun about the way that we treat technology, we think that we command technology and in reality, in a way, we are slaves of technology because we are so addicted to the use of technology that we go out of our way to keep our phones charged, provide Wi-Fi and um, download new apps, use new apps, we are alerted all the time with incoming messages and incoming calls. We use it even while we're eating in restaurants. And therefore, even though we, we don't want to admit it, according to this cartoon, it is technology that is our master and not that we are the masters of technology. And this is having an effect. We have already seen that the use of digital technology is changing how we use our brains but it is also having effect on our motor skills because according to the news, today's youngsters, they are so accustomed to using the smartphone in, instead of using their fingers and doing traditional play that when, when coming to handling some uh, surgical tools, they don't have the motor skills to use them properly. This is another issue which we need to take into consideration, which we need to take into account when looking at the effects of technology. 
Once again, this is a message about our younger generation and not, not just them. Uh, we're seeing in case of fire, please leave the building before posting it on social media. So the most important thing is your safety, not taking the uh, photos and videos of the fire so that you can post them on social media. Here, your personal safety is more important than social media. But I bet that some people will actually stop and take the photos and the video and try to upload it on social media. But by then, most probably it would be too late and they will fall victim to the fire. So, to wrap everything up, let's say that there are two basic approaches to media literacy. There is the critical approach and there is a 21st century approach. They are complementary, but there are some basic differences between them. So, critical media literacy brings to the fore the relationship between media literacy and critical literacy, which challenges canonical texts as well as privileged readings of all texts. Such instruction in media literacy is a directive to cultivate skills in analyzing media codes and conventions, abilities to criticize stereotypes, dominant values and ideologies, and competences to interpret the multiple meanings and messages generated by media text. Here we are talking about media as power. Media as an important influencer in issues such as gender issues, power issues, race and how society actually looks at media, uses media, interprets media and how these in turn affect our society. The ethos of critical media literacy instruction is grounded in analysis of textual power relationships. So critical media literacy is actually looking very deep at media, very deep at their messages. On the other hand, the new or 21st century literacy is instruction, while not a mutually exclusive entity from critical media literacy instruction, is concerned more with the ways in which new media like social networking sites, iPods, voice over IP, they challenge, reinscribe, expand and in many instances connect in and out of school literacy. In other words, those literacy skills such as viewing and writing and listening may be increasingly compromised or enhanced by Web 2.0 networks where end-user writing access questions who ultimately is the author of a particular text. So we can see here that we are looking at how the effect of media literacy is impacting on traditional literacies and how they can actually be beneficial but also provide disadvantages towards each other and we have seen a recent example where Finland they have stopped from making mandatory the learning of calligraphy learning how to write with a pencil or a pen for them this is no longer important because the important thing is not actually holding a pen or a pencil in your hand but actually how to write how to think clearly how to evaluate and then write and therefore, if you don't write with a pencil or a pen, you write on a computer, you type, you use a keyboard, you swipe or you tap. This is a very recent example from one of the countries which is at the forefront in education. And this is something which we cannot ignore. However, we must always keep in mind that new 21st century literacies, when we come to their instruction, we need to be ourselves as educators open-minded, be critical, and make sure that what we analyze, what we see, and what we suggest is of benefit to our learners. Bringing them both together in this figure, we have the relationship between critical media literacy and new literacies, with media literacy pedagogy as the common denominator of the two. Therefore, our media literacy pedagogy needs to have both critical media literacy and 21st century literacies on our radar. And we have to link this to the other lesson, to the other video, when we talked about uh, pedagogy and methodologies. This model aims to show that critical media literacy and new 21st century literacies are distinct, though mutually compatible, forms of instruction and pedagogy for media literacy, learning and teaching. 
In deep in the classroom, many teachers of media literacy, particularly in English language arts contexts, may in fact vacillate between the two and may not entertain such a theoretical difference. Okay, we are being a bit academic here, but the most important thing here is that we do not remain superficial. Even though we choose one uh, over the other, it's very important that we provide our learners with the necessary skills and competences. The approach, the point of view, whether it's critical media literacy or new literacies, both of them are important and we can gain a lot if we implement one of them or both of them. However, we stand to gain nothing by ignoring them.